main test in the November issue of New Zealand Trucking Magazine is a DAF CF85 8x4, the first in the Waitomo Petroleum fleet. My name's uh, Nathan Thor, I um, work for Waitomo Petroleum. So I'm a um, Pukekohe based driver, um, working out of a Wurri Oil terminal. So it's a DAF, I've been in it for about four and a half months now. Um, before that I was in a Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi um, Fuso, pretty much like hopping out of a HQ Holden into a BMW, pretty much here. So 15,000 of diesel for the trailer and 16 of diesel for the um, truck. When you think success in Tikawuri, then Sir David Fagan and the late Sir Colin Meads are probably your go-tos. But the King Country Town has plenty more to offer in the success stakes. From a commercial perspective, Watomo Petroleum is right up there on the town's roll of honour. Founded in 1947 by the late Des Ormsby, the company, run by Des's grandson Jimmy and celebrating its 70th birthday this year, is a slick, high-profile distributor and retailer of all things fuel. For their heavier distribution work, the company has recently switched to DAF from their traditional Mitsubishi slash Fuso leanings of recent decades. But why change and why DAF? The answer to the first question is all about more grunt to accommodate VDAM advantages, especially around bulk drop runs to the company's retail outlets. As for the second question, it was all about retaining the ease of entry and exit in a business where a typical rural distribution run involves hundreds of stops a month. It also involved how easily the barrels were able to be swapped from the fusos. You see, one tank out sees out two chassis, so the closer they could get any newcomer to the fusos chassis with, the better. The slipper fitted and the DAF went to the ball. Driver Nathan Paroa was assigned the first DAF and so far it's been great. The first thing you notice entering the DAF cab is the spacious airiness. Clever design people make great use of space and the DAF's cockpit is superb with plenty of headroom and legroom. Sure it's slow profile so there's a bit of engine intrusion and being a day cab with data terminals etc Storage is an issue for hoarders, but not the well-organised. Controls and information dissemination from truck to driver via the wrap dash is first rate. And the interior is lined and trimmed in materials that convey the Euro cleanable luxury feel. On the road, the CF85's credentials and the go stakes are clearly evident. The 12.9 litre NX engine cracks the magical 375 kilowatt 500 horsepower mark giving 50 max trucks that 10 horsepower to the tonne. It also wades in with 2,500 newton metres, 1850 pound foot of torque. When the peak torque starts to dip at 1410 RPM, power's already a tad over 500, so it's a lively performer. Helping out on the Marsden Point to Wurri pipeline crisis, the DAF romped up the north side of Shedaways Hill over the Pahuihui Viaduct and high fifth at 33 kilometres an hour, grossing 44 and a half tonne. Nathan's unit will run at 46 tonne eventually once a new drawbar arrives, so there's no question he'll be stropping around his South Auckland patch with ease. This is a brand new truck with a lot of freeing up to do. The first Waitomo DAF has an 18 speed manual roadie in it, which was a surprise. Waitomo are going to the AMT option in the second of the four DAFs they're getting in the next year or so. The first one was a decision based largely around if it works, and it has done for decades, then why change it? But they're really keen to test an AMT out. Nathan's a seasoned manual man, so he glided around the traps effortlessly. Waitomo fleet manager Lou Ferez said the decision to change was not taken lightly. They've had no issues with the Fuso product or the support. It's just changing horses for changing horses. All things being equal, Fuso will likely remain the preferred go-to for their mini tanker fleet replacements. 
Well, just one thing, uh, what Southpac, we have really found a really to deal with, both from a, you know, a servicing point of view and also from a sales point of view, we found them really good. I mean, it's little things like, um, our sick ones are getting built now, but we've obviously wanted to two more for next year, but we had a meeting with them at their request up there in uh, Atbury, with um, Southpac and also Neil came down too, and they said, what can we do you know, from factory make it easier for you guys you know, to set up for a tanker? So as Jimmy pointed out, it's, it's part of the thing too is all the gear on tankers, there's not a lot of room on chassis between you put your cones and your pumping gear and everything else on. And I mean, a simple thing like rerouting the, the, the main, um, main electrical leads, you know, where it's wet and under the chassis by the second steer just to give more room for where the, the forces come out. So, you know, they're certainly on the ball and really helpful. All in all, a well thought out decision on Waitomo's part and things are definitely looking good for the brand and the famous blue and white livery moving forward. There's lots more to tell in this story, so to get all the detail get your November issue of New Zealand Trucking Magazine out now.